This video is how to do uh, sorting of codes into code categories using the old school method or uh, using card files or strips of paper with your codes written on them. Uh, it's about 35 minutes long and it'll get you from the point where you've got a bunch of <coughs> independent codes Okay, so what I would like to do today in this podcast is to demonstrate the process by uh, of going from having a whole bunch of open codes that you've developed uh, through uh, <clears throat> your, your gerund ending coding process and collecting those into something that's going to be a little bit more manageable uh, as the next phase of the um, analysis process. <clears throat> the reason that you're seeing me here live and in person is because uh, myself, uh, I find it helpful to to get off the computer for this. Uh, at least when I'm working with Microsoft Word to do this uh, kind of analysis. Uh, I wish that there was an easy way to, to export um, the uh, notations that, that you've made using the uh, make a note feature of Microsoft Word. Uh, <clears throat> I haven't figured out one of those yet. So if you can find a way that that can be exported to Excel or something that can then be printed off onto uh, uh, 3x5 cards or, or uh, stickers, uh, please let me know. Uh, in the meantime, <clears throat> you've seen the previous podcast, and I'll show you a copy of it, uh, as part of this uh, demonstration, um, I, I've used the um, comment, uh, make a comment section of Microsoft um, Word, printed it out using uh, the, the print function, and then in the options, uh, print out comments only. Uh, those I printed out to a piece of paper. And then I took it into to, uh, our office and, and sliced each individual uh, comment into its own separate little piece of paper. So uh, you could use scissors for this, of course, uh, if you don't happen to have one of those industrial uh, paper slicers, paper cutters. So uh, I'll be showing you that also in a minute. Okay, what are we seeing here? Uh, this uh, particular set of piles of, of uh, cards are, are not from this current project that I've been talking about in this podcast, but one from a previous uh, project. Uh, uh, in, in that, this is from my dissertation work. Uh, I coded out some 484 individual codes. I believe that was the number. And... Uh, what I did in that process was, was uh, since I did it in, in Atlas, I could just export all those codes uh, into, into a file and then import it into Excel and then print them off onto, uh, uh, onto a grid of, of, of um, essentially business card size uh, grid and uh, printed it out uh, with, e with each code being listed uh, on this card, like this one is maintaining order in a meeting. So this one's uh, uh, just has a little code printed on it. And uh, uh, <clears throat> it's quick to see how if you have th this number of codes with, uh, uh, with uh, a, a, a long project that took uh, a couple of years from, from start to finish that uh, you have to have some kind of a mechanism to keep this stuff organized. Now, what we're dealing with is, is a much smaller set of code, uh, set of uh, documents, but still, <clears throat> we can uh, 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 help ourselves along the way by uh, having some systematic coding system. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace these co these. Uh, uh, cards and put them back in in their cabinet and uh, we'll come back and deal with the codes uh, from our student journals. Okay, sorting codes into piles is uh, is 
a process that is not that dissimilar from uh, doing open coding. Uh, you're just simply taking the data as it comes. Uh, you can see here my, my strips of, of paper that I've, that I've cut off from, uh, um, from the printouts uh, of the memos from Microsoft Word. Uh, you, may, you may notice that some of them are pink and some of them are blue. Uh, if this video is of a, of a high enough quality, you'll see that. Uh, <clears throat> That's not for any tracking reason, at least uh, uh, it wasn't intentional. Uh, that's simply because my ink printer uh, uh, ran out. Now some people do use color coding systems when they're coding, uh, particularly if they're, if they're using uh, multiple coders. Uh, Microsoft Word uh, will automatically um, give a different color to different coders. So. Uh, <clears throat> now, what do I have here? Uh, my strips of paper uh, to review. Uh, in each one of the, the um, comments that I made that resulted in these pieces of, of, of paper when I was doing open coding, in addition to stating a gerund ending code, uh, I've also put... Uh, a, another piece of information on here that, that is going to um, um, uh, help track me back to the original data. So in addition to the open code, which is jumping over hurdles in this case, I also put uh, the letter J and the number 4, which is my shorthand for journal 4, and then open code, that this is an open code. What Microsoft Word does for me <coughs> is that it, it gives me the um, information about this particular comment and where it lies in that Microsoft Word document. So I have page one, comment, BP, that would be me, five. So this is, this is the fifth comment that I made, and there's my name, uh, uh, in this particular journal. Uh, and it also gives me a, a timestamp. Uh, uh, in large and complex projects, uh, it may be important to know at what point in the analysis you emerged a piece of information. Uh, so, briefly, uh, I'll introduce you to the process. Uh, pull up and pull pull out your your, your stack of, of codes here, whether it be on cards like you saw before, or whether it be on little sheets of paper. And you just simply read the comment, jumping over hurdles. Uh, I don't specifically remember in the in the document exactly what that was talking about, but um, uh, it goes in a pile by itself, since it's the first piece of information. It has to go by itself. Now the second piece of, of information I get, and it comes from a different um, <clears throat> document, this was from Journal 1, an open code, called Esteeming Field Instructor. So, is that seem to go with jumping over hurdles? And eh, not really. So, I'm going to make a new pile. So now I have two piles uh, going out there. <clears throat> valuing Relationship. This comes out of Journal 4. Uh, now, Valuing Relationship certainly seems to be similar in some respect to esteeming field instructor. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put that over in, the, in that pile. And, uh, and that pile is going to be about things related to, to uh, either being in relationship or, or <clears throat> uh, 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 whether it be uh, a personal relationship or a... a uh, uh, relationship with an agency. Uh, what I would do at this point, I would make a little memo, just to let me know that, that that's what that is about. This other one over here called Jumping with Hurdles, it, it doesn't have uh, a categorical name yet. And uh, <clears throat> here's my code that just, it, that, that just simply says, this is practice journal number one. I can kind of get rid of that one. That was just a, a, a business keeping note. 
Setting improvement goals. Doesn't seem to fit with either jumping over hurdles or those that stack of codes that has to do with with uh, valuing relationships. Driving oneself crazy. Doesn't go with valuing relationships. Certainly doesn't seem to immediately go with setting improvement goals. Jumping over hurdles, eh, maybe not. So we'll, we'll go ahead and put it in a pile all by itself again. Relying on my experience. Where does that fit in? Uh, uh, it could fit in with driving oneself crazy since it has to do with, with the self and, and what, um, what the student brought to that practicum. could also have to do with student improvement goals. Uh, the person's relying on, on experiences. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we'll put it over here and then we'll write a note about codes related to the intrapersonal, the, that intrapersonal process, that inside the, the individual process, whether it be driving themselves crazy or relying on their skills. So We'll do one more. Uh, you don't need to necessarily go through all this. Feeling the jitters. Feeling the jitters. Okay, feeling the jitters hmm, doesn't really go, go with either one of those. Uh, we'll um, put it up there by itself. Now I know that there, there's some other ones um, that um, um, have to do with, with feelings. And let me grab a couple of those because I just happen to see them laying here. This one is called having confidence. Um, uh, now having confidence is a feeling. Feeling the jitters is a feeling. <clears throat> I could put them two together. Um, having confidence is, is also a part of a person's internal uh, process. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it over here with the feeling for now. Now, of course, we're not married to any of this stuff. Having patience. So now that I've, I've established that this pile up here has to do with intrapersonal feelings, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to put that there. So we have this intrapersonal feelings, and then we have this intrapersonal um, uh, process. So slightly different. Uh, having overlap between field and classroom. Okay, so what we have here is, is a new pot. So we're going to put it over here. It doesn't seem to relate at all. And we'll go ahead and give you a break. I'll continue to code all these in the break. And um, then we'll come back and, and talk about the next step. Okay, we're back. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of coding in your absence. You probably can't read this on your screens. It's not that necessary because I'm going to uh, be reading them aloud to you. And uh, um, <clears throat> so he, here's my progress so far, and I didn't take take very long, um, about about 15 minutes. Uh, I, I looked through these these um, uh, piles of, of things that I grouped together because they're similar. Uh, uh, <clears throat> starting down here, these are all a group of of uh, of. Um, codes that have to do with um, uh, the intrapersonal process, what's going on in, in, inside of oneself. Uh, learning in a field environment, things regarding relationships, having problems in the agency, negotiating the system, feelings, and finally uh, becoming bureaucratic. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so I have seven different uh, piles of of codes. Uh, um, uh, <clears throat> One of the things that immediately jumps out at me is that some of the codes in in in, in some of these um, uh, piles could have maybe gone in some other um, 
piles as well. Uh, for example, this one here called Experiencing Learning Overload. Uh, well, we have this um, uh, pile over here about learning in a field in, in environment. So we have something that's a little bit about uh, this person's internal process. Uh, and we have something that's um, um, about learning. So, so it, it could go in, in either, and in fact, it can go in both. So, so we may make a note of that. What the next stage of the process is going to be is, 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 is to bundle these codes up. Uh, and uh, then we just let them sit for a day or two, depending on, on your schedule. Don't let them sit too long, but also just don't immediately go to it. Because cause some of this stuff is really fresh in my memory. And, and while I was coding certain things... Um, like, for example, uh, there was this, this one up here about becoming bureaucratic. I could remember uh, when I coded uh, maintaining records. Uh, I remember that code. I remember what it was about. It was about uh, the, the, the students saving all their emails. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it was almost, almost, you know, I almost wanted to say in, in the original code about being defensive. Because it seemed like they were, they were um, uh, having some trouble with their agency uh, coordinating schedule, getting their key, getting, getting uh, uh, even permission to sit in the building where they're doing their practicum un unsupervised. So, so there's um, uh, uh, <clears throat> something about a bureaucratic structure that that kind of emerged out of that. Now. Uh, I vaguely remember the one that I titled Being Oriented to the Agency, and that had something to do with being shown what to do, what goes where, how we do things here. Uh, again, uh, very much a bureaucratic response. You, in your human behavior curriculum, you'll read about bureaucracies and how they, how they can create, on one hand, kind of a streamlined... Um, um, process where where uh, rules get set up people operate by rules they don't have to to uh, to reinvent interventions on every occasion uh, interventions tend to look similar across different workers so there's a good good side of uh, bureaucracy but the other side of bureaucracy is is that it does have rigid rules and and in order to demonstrate that you're complying with the rules or that uh, your non-compliance uh, has to do with inflexible and rigid rules, people start to, to keep, uh, keep, keep, keep records of what it is they're doing and why, uh, which can be good advice. Well, that's exactly what we're doing in this research process because uh, uh, we may, in, in a research uh, project, come up with... Uh, information that challenges uh, uh, strongly held assumptions. Uh, <clears throat> we want to keep a trail going of, of how we got from the original data, those student journals, through these codes and these themes that are starting to develop uh, and um, to an assertion. So, having let these things set for several days, we haven't really, but our next stage of the process would be to look at these these themes that we're developing. Um, since these individual codes have the ability to to be easily traced back to where they exist in the Microsoft Word document by our, our code that says J2 open code appearance of deceiving, we know it's the first comment in that particular um, uh, uh, Word document we can easily go back to it and find it and look within the context of that code and see if it has to do with negotiating the system. If it does, it stays in that pile. If it doesn't, it, it finds a new home or creates a new pile of its own. Um, so that, that's essentially 
this stage of the process uh, on open coding. Uh, uh, we'll take a, a break and we'll come back, rearrange some of this stuff, and begin to take you into the next stage of the process. Okay, we're back now. Uh, what, I've, what I've done uh, is to simply take all of the codes that, that we had put into different uh, uh, piles and, um, uh, and clipped them together with the, the note that, that I made uh, as to the title of the theme. Uh, now, an important note on, on titling these themes, these are just theme names that, that uh, emerged to me from my interaction with the, um, uh, with the data. Uh, and it's going to be strongly influenced by how many times I've re read and reread the data. It's going to be influenced perhaps by uh, vagaries of mood. So you know that that's part of the important reason why why we just don't sit down and do this all at once. Uh, so this isn't the kind of thing that you wait until you know the last uh, 24 hours before you're you're supposed to have a, a report in to do. This is this is something that that needs to 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 uh, uh, ferment a little bit, you know, or to uh, to to rise a little bit. And thinking of of uh, of uh, uh, bread metaphor, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, so you, you have uh, more of than what you you, you might have had before. Uh, uh, so we have we have uh, these these seven themes feelings uh, in quotation marks. I put them learning in a field environment, intrapersonal processes having problem with agency, regarding relationships, negotiating the system, and becoming bureaucratic. Well, there's a couple of things uh, that immediately jumps out uh, from, this, uh, from this reading. And that is, there's a bit of relationship between negotiating the system and becoming bureaucratic. So what I'm going to do is to is to put these two together. Um, uh, <clears throat> and for now, I'm having negotiating the system be above becoming bureaucratic. So I'm tentatively assigning a little bit of hierarchical relationship there that because. Becoming bureaucratic is, is part of knowing how to negotiate a system. Uh, also within that group is, is this um, having a problem with, within uh, uh, an agency. Again, this one is, is related to the negotiating the system uh, and uh, it may be more sideways related to becoming bureaucratic. Certainly, ha handling problems within uh, a, a system, negotiating with that, often involves knowing the rules and playing by the rules. Uh, so you can see where we've, we've really kind of cut our data down already. Uh, uh, learning in a field environment, feelings and intrapersonal processes, and regarding relationships. Uh, so we have these in, inter, interpersonal, intrapersonal processes, and then we have these feelings. Uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of put them together in what may be a new super theme or super category, depending on whose language you, you use. Uh, so it's a broader theme that I may put under uh, something like uh, what's going on with the student. Uh, so that, we've cut that down. We have just two left. We have learning in a field environment, which I stuck up there already because uh, the context of, of this, um, these journal articles, I mean, these, these, these um, 
student journals are about their field ex experience in a social work program. So this is about that. So that, so it got elevated there, s perhaps somewhat artificially because of the context, but it, it does make a, a bit of a container. Uh, the learning in the field environment may not be the majority of the thing that is coming out. You know, it doesn't have the mo it doesn't have as many codes as this relationship one. Doesn't have as many codes as this feelings one. Uh, or these interpersonal processes one. These are the, these three are the ones that, that are really getting most of the codes. But this is the container in which the, in which it, it, when it's uh, all all moving. Uh, so uh, what I have left is this one batch of, uh, of codes. So it, it, it either goes with one of these themes, you know, regarding relationship. Uh, uh, it's clearly not an internal process. I mean, it links to internal processes. Uh, it is um, uh, certainly is an important aspect of negotiating um, uh, a system. Uh, it is not necessarily a part of becoming bureaucratic, unless, of course, you think of of, of, of your knowing your relationship with your job role and uh, and sticking closely to that. Uh, <clears throat> and it isn't necessarily that connected to having a problem with an agency. Um, so, with that in mind, I'm looking around and so where where is this going to fit in? Is it going to fit in in its own pile? Uh, and, and what is just occurring to me um, while I'm doing this is, is, is maybe I can just stick it underneath learning in the, in the field environment and kind of visualize uh, 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 to myself a, a sense of, of, of connection. So, so I'm going to put these pencils down as, 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 as arrows uh, indicate that that, that this relationship could have some kind of a mediating um, uh, uh, factor, so that, that these relationships, whether it be with the individual field instructor, structure, whether it be the uh, agency, helps to negotiate and mediate this internal process, this, whether it be reflective self-learning or whether it be feelings. Uh, and... Uh, the various things that are going on in the field, the, the, the learning about the system, the, the uh, resolution of problems, how to, how to, to work and survive within, within a system. So, uh, <clears throat> and thinking again of the, the overarching uh, uh, theme that, that seemed to emerge out of, out of this first reading of the data, I would put some kind of a of a indicator of a relationship between between uh, the uh, the learning in a field and and the stuff about relationship. And so uh, we're going to put pencils facing both ways. So um, <clears throat> we could have pencil, pencils focusing both ways on this one as well. So that oops, I don't have both ends sharpened. On that pencil. So, so the, the direction that the lead of the pencil is, is, is facing shows some relationship. So we got some, some relationship across these three. Uh, we've got the interpersonal uh, and the, the, the agency being mediated by the relationships with individuals in an agency. And that has, um, uh, and it plays, I guess, an important function in facilitating learning in a field environment. So that's that's my my quick analysis of of this um, um, uh, these sets of codes. And uh, uh, what I'll provide for you uh, next in, in a later in a later podcast will be moving out of the the three dimensional world where you've got pieces of paper that you can manipulate and, and move around and back onto the computer. Um, now Microsoft Word doesn't have a very good mechanism for, for, for manipulating these codes around. 
and uh, uh, <clears throat> qualitative data analysis software such as Atlas TI and NVivo, they do have the capacity to to cluster theme uh, cluster codes into themes, cluster themes into super categories or super themes. Uh, <clears throat> but there's something I like about the feel of 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 getting out of that abstract and into the concrete uh, that I find very helpful. I mean, we're still going to go back. Uh, this is, you know, it becomes very concrete when these when these abstract ideas like feelings and interpersonal processes and and negotiating the system are on a piece of paper. Much more concrete than on on, on a digital thing for me. Uh, if you've been working with computers all your life, uh, maybe uh, it's a little different for you. But uh, uh, I still, this was the way I first learned how to to to, to do coding uh, all those years ago. Uh, so I still use it. I'm not saying that it's better than other methods. Um, it just works for me. Uh, I'm showing you this, uh, and if you can recreate this or create what works for you using Microsoft Word or any other uh, technology that you might have access to, uh, I say go for it because that's really, uh, it's not important how we, we get to the understanding of what's going on in the data, which really is the world in which our participants are living. Uh, it's not how we get there, it's the fact that we get there and we get there with clarity, we get there with some sort of a systematic method that we can we can demonstrate to others that there's a clear trail from what our respondents, our interviewees, our sources of data are saying about their lived experience and the assertions that we end up making in a final report, whether that report be a scholarly paper, whether it be a book, whether it be a report to to uh, a funder, uh, an agency, uh, or, or something that may be part of a uh, community empowerment project. So that will be all for right now. All right, wrapping up this recording. Briefly, it's important to remember that this was not a, an actual analysis, but a demonstration of an analysis but to kind of take you through from collating your codes into uh, code themes, um, code categories, some people call them. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, uh, I had uh, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and, ex and then uh, this thing about feelings, and uh, which I broke up into uh, interpersonal experience. One had to do with thinking and the other had to do with feeling. Uh, and those I created a new hierarchical uh, category um, <clears throat> that didn't contain codes itself but just contained those two code categories. Uh, this I call, called student learning about the self. Uh, if you recall there was also um, uh, a set of code categories around regarding relationship and then there was the codes around um, becoming bureaucratic and having a problem with the agency. Those which I um, organized underneath the heading of negotiating systems um, <clears throat> and I discovered that the um, uh, the issues around regarding relationship whether it was having the relationship with the field instructor or having a relationship with the agency through a good orientation, uh, I felt like was a mediating factor. Now this was this is uh, a hypothetical since I haven't done a complete analysis. And in fact, uh, what you saw me organizing in the film was only about a quarter of the codes um, that I would have had because I didn't completely uh, code all the uh, all the data. Um, and then I couched all that under um, learning in a field environment. Um, and this is kind of what a lot of people will end up doing 
uh, as they organize their their codes when they're doing qualitative analysis they'll 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 develop these broad themes uh, based on these very abstract uh, concepts that are are connected through several steps to the original data now uh, comes the task of of uh, going back to the data by following backtracking and following your codes to get the um, rich detailed quotes that make a qualitative uh, analysis so compelling, a qualitative uh, manuscript so compelling.